Hi all. Uh, I wanted today to go through how to stack, calibrate and integrate data that you may collect from a mono camera. I've recently acquired a uh, Altair 183M um, mono camera with filters. I had a initial go at it um, and when I had my files I had files everywhere I had uh, lights for LRGB and a narrowband um, and then for each filter you need flats and you need dark flats um, and I ended up with files everywhere and then I would have one big file with all the lights in it. I'd have to sort them all out into different files. And I was, it would take me ages literally to just put all the files together. Um, and I thought there's got to there's, there's be a more automated, better way of doing it, uh, which uh, there is, of course. Um, this works in Astro Pixel Processor and in PixInsights. Um, I did have some problems in PixInsight, however, with this, the files I've got here. They're not the, the best of files. It's just literally a couple of hours of the monkey head. Um, and in PixInsight, it failed to stack. Um, APP is brilliant. It's uh, so automated for you, it, um, and it rarely fails. And if it does, it uh, normally tells you what's going wrong. But at PixInsight, I was a bit confused as to why it failed. Anyway, I will be going back to that and having a look. And if I get that working, I'll um, do a video and show that too. So let's just jump into this now, um, monkey head. I've got a couple of hours, and I've got RGB, red, green, blue, um, HA and O3 data. I've only got a five position filter wheel. Um, but uh, now that I've uh, had a couple of goes, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely thinking I'm gonna sell that filter wheel and move to a eight position filter wheel so that I can have my LRGB and narrowband filters all in one filter wheel so that wherever I want to photograph, I can um, just go to the filters. One of the things, um, I learned in Nina, which is what I use to uh, get my images now, is you can um, uh, label all of the filter positions so that in your FITS file, it actually puts the filter name in the header. An APP, PixInsight, and they, they will pick that up and automatically sort your files for you. Now this is obviously a massive time saving thing. So if this is the this is the folder I'm gonna do the work in. Um, we haven't got multi session, so I'm gonna untick that, but we have got multi channel. We don't need the zero tab because this is for one shot color to set up your bio matrices, etc. So we're just in the load screen. So we give this a name, we're gonna say uh, monkey head, and we've got what we got, we've got RGB hydrogen alpha and let's we can do an RGB HOO um, integration eventually we'll put it all together on the combined RGB which I'll show you towards the end so if you've got within the headers the actual filter names as you can see you've got red green blue HA there's O3 before it just said one two three four five and I would have to pick each one out individually. But if you've got the name in the fits header, if you just select them all and say open, and then here it just says assign what is in the header tag, it automatically puts them in their groups and you haven't got to do any sorting at all. It does it for you and it even colors them to make it pretty much idiot proof. I mean, you've got to go some there to make it proof of me right let's have a look so under flats again I've got 32 flats of each one now I've got a few issues with my flats at the moment they're not the best um, the timings are all over the place um, I need to have a look at my flat panel and work out the best way of doing this through Nina I'm still learning but th th these these demonstrate what we're going to be doing Dark flats to match the flats. Now, when you go into, when you select all of these, it tries to put them under all channels. And you don't want that. 
because each dark flat for each filter will have a different exposure time. So again, just apply a filter head and it'll apply them to the appropriate one. So as you can see, you've got flat hay and then down here, you've got your dark flats under each color as well. The darks, I have a master dark for this, which is the same settings and everything as the lights there and I've already run this before so I already have a bad pixel map if you don't have a bad pixel map one will automatically be made for you okay under register normally untick same camera and optics even though I did use the same camera and optics but that can sometimes cause issues if you leave it ticked um, I've always left it ticked but I've started to untick it it doesn't really it hasn't really made an awful lot of difference so and um, I don't go through all the different stages. I've got integrate per channel. I've checked the lights beforehand um, and they're all good. So I'm just gonna stack all 37 of them. As I say, this was only a sort of couple of hours of uh, capture. And now what uh, will happen is it will just crunch through the lot. It will calibrate. It will do analyze the stars it will register them it will normalize all the lights and then it will finally integrate and it will give me five integration files one for each filter where we can then combine them in the combine RGB tool which is under number nine tools there yeah, combine RGB and um, we'll do that afterwards um, do a quick crop but we won't uh, do much processing to it this is really just a demonstration of how to get the files into your PC and get them integrated without too much fuss. Um, as I say, what I was doing before was very complicated and time consuming. Um, and uh, I needed to find a better way and this is definitely a better way. So uh, I shall uh, speak to you soon. Okay, and uh, the integration's finished. We just uh, I'll call this up here. So what we end up with is uh, five separate integrations, one for each of the filters. So we got blue, green, HA, which will be the strongest one. Nice, O3 and red. Now I do apologize, my flats are not correct. My calibration frames, I need to look at my light panel and what I'm doing uh, with these. I just wanted to put these together so I could show this uh, procedure of getting the, uh, getting the files into uh, your uh, program to get them stacked. So uh, I'm gonna have a look at that later actually and see if I can get them a lot better so that everything's uh, a lot cleaner but anyway there you have them so um, what you can then do here um, is combine the files in APP under the RGB combine tool and uh, we've got RGB and hydrogen alpha so we've got RGB HOO formula add channel and again <coughs> excuse me you don't need to add each channel individually because they've got the filter and the color in the fix header we can literally just select them all say open and it'll assign each one you can just double check as they're going in will it green to green ha to ha o3 to o3 red to red once it's in, we can then recalculate and it comes up with your coloured image. I'm not going to muck about with it, I'm, I'm literally just going to crop it now and do a little bit of light pollution removal just to give you a final image to look at. So we'll save that, okay, keep it as a fits file, we then cancel, go down and we can see our processed combined RGB composite call that up
Okay. So I've got quite a lot of uh, mess at the edges here where my everything was quite not quite right, but I will look to sort all of that out later. But let's just give that crop, get rid of all the uh, most of the bad stuff there. Okay. So, uh, oops. I think I need, I need to scroll it up a bit there. I want one, the one be like there it is there, the bottom one. Here's my cropped image. Okay, so what we can do now is remove light pollution. <clears throat> now I do take these files into PixInsight um, and do uh, processing. I think PixInsight is much better post-processing tools. However, the dynamic background extraction, although it works very well, I actually do think the AstroPixel processor light pollution tool is better. Um, it uh, definitely works for me. I also know that Tim from Astro Addicts does this um, and uses this tool and uh, raves it and, and he also uses PixInsight. So I, I tend to agree with him. I think this is this is a, a brilliant tool. Very easy to use, just boxes Good, good, good range of boxes, and it will flatten the image and remove the light pollution. And then you can actually look at the corrected light pollution model. That looks a lot better. So we'll save that. We could do a bit more on it, but uh, it looks okay. And there you have an image that you can do more work with with uh, post processing in uh, APP, or you can move it into Photoshop, or you can move it into PixInsight. But uh, as I say, the main reason for this video was to show you how to get the files into APP and get everything stacked. And I think you'll agree it's actually quite uh, easy, very automatic. At first, I was getting into a complete mess with my files, and now. Um, it's nice and easy as long as the headers are, are filled in it does it automatically for you and um, I'm looking forward to getting some really good integration time and uh, working more on these uh, on these targets and getting much better images um, this is the monkey's head first time I've actually photographed this uh, this uh, target so um, I think uh, I'd like to do a narrow band SHO on it so um, I haven't got any clear skies for a week so uh, I'll have to uh, play about with this and um, hope for some clear skies and uh, I wish you all clear skies too anyway thank you for watching um, I do have other videos if there's any videos you'd like me to make um, I'll uh, endeavor to do that um, if I can I can only share what I know um, I'm still learning a lot myself, but uh, I hope this has uh, helped you and uh, if uh, you'd like more then uh, please subscribe and uh, let me know. Thank you very much.